Now, one area where Apple is truly leading the industry is in its support for Thunderbolt 5. Now, the reality is if you want Thunderbolt 5 connectivity, you have to turn to an Apple Mac. So in this video, I wanna look at what is Thunderbolt 5 and also to look at which Macs support it and how many ports you get on each of those devices. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's dive into looking at Thunderbolt 5 and uh, specifically uh, Thunderbolt 5 on Apple Silicon. So Thunderbolt 5 and USB 4 V2 are closely rated standards that build upon each other, which of course is great news for consumers in terms of uh, compatibility and backwards compatibility and so on. Now USB 4 V2 serves as the foundational protocol upon which Thunderbolt 5 is developed. In essence, Thunderbolt 5 incorporates all the features of USB 4 V2 and then adds some specific enhancements on top of that. So USB 4 V2 introduces significant improvements uh, over its predecessor, offering transfer speeds now up to 80 gigabits per second. It uh, also supports advanced display protocols while maintaining backward compatibility. However, and this is the key point, a lot of the things that are available in USB 4 V2 are optional. So a manufacturer is able to say it's v, uh, USB 4 V2 compatible without actually implementing all of the things that are needed without uh, adding all of those functionalities. So there's a minimum set and there's quite a lot that's optional. Now Thunderbolt 5 basically makes all those optional things mandatory. So what does that really mean? So you definitely have to have the 80 gigabits per second, which is optional with USB for V2, it's available, but it's optional. You definitely have to have that. And there's also a mode, if you can see here the difference between them, uh, you've got 80 gigabits in one direction and the other direction. Now there's also another mode called bandwidth boost mode where three of the lanes are for output and one lane is for input. So you've got transmit up to 120 gigabits per second and receive of up to 40 gigabits per second. That's brilliant for video work. And here's a quick diagram to show that USB 2, USB 3. Remember, there's USB 3 version uh, 3.1, 3.2, and then there's Gen 1 and Gen 2. And I've got a whole video about the naming of USB 3. But even with USB 3, a lot of it is optional. And with USB 4, a lot of it is optional. And all this stuff here in V2 is optional. So you don't have to provide the 80 gigabits but with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 you've got that 40 gigabits and now with Thunderbolt 5 you have to have the 80 gigabits and you've also got this 120 gigabits for the video stuff. Now Thunderbolt 5 mandates the inclusion of all USB 4 2.0 optional features plus it includes uh, extra support for that 120 gigabits uh, per second and extra display support, including up to three 4K displays. In summary, Thunderbolt 5 is basically USB 4, but everything that was optional becomes mandatory. So where are we with Apple Silicon and Thunderbolt 5? Well, the following chips support Thunderbolt 5. That's the M3 Ultra. I've got a video about the M3 Ultra here on this channel, the M4 Pro and the M4 Max. And I've got videos about the M4 series here on this channel as well. So if you look at some of the different devices that are available from Apple, here you've got the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro. And notice on the front, it's got USB C ports. In fact, they are USB 3.1 Gen 2. And then at the back, you've got these three Thunderbolt 5 ports. So if you buy a Mac Mini with the M4 Pro, do note the difference between the ports on the front and the ports on the back. Of course, they all use USB type C connectors, Thunderbolt 5, Thunderbolt 4, uh, USB. They all use the same connector, but they've got different capabilities. And also on the M4 Pro, you can have up to three displays at 6K resolution because Apple have got some 6K uh, displays and you can do that over Thunderbolt or HDMI or you can have uh, different displays at different 8K, for example, at six, uh, 60 hertz or 4K displays at 240 hertz and so on. So there's a whole bunch of different uh, variations depending on what you're plugging in. Now for the MacBook Pro, life is pretty simple. Basically, you get three Thunderbolt 5 ports uh, and that's it. And they, of course, support USB 4 as well. 
and it's basically uh, Thunderbolt 5. So you've got two on one side and one on the other side, along with that HDMI port. So that's pretty simple. So if you've got a MacBook Pro, Thunderbolt 5, no worries. That's a MacBook Pro M4 Pro and M4 Max. Now, when it comes to the M3 Ultra, each Thunderbolt 5 port is supported by its own custom design controller directly on the chip. This means that there's dedicated bandwidth for each port. And of course, uh, when you have USB, you can share uh, the bandwidth over many ports because, of course, you can basically build in a mini hub inside your device. And you've actually got two ports that are sharing the same back end stuff with a Mac. Uh, studio with the M3 Ultra, you've got a dedicated controller for each port. That means that you get enormous amounts of bandwidth. And in fact, you can even connect Mac Studios together over Thunderbolt 5 as a kind of like a, a networking thing uh, to build in a cluster for things like large language models and so on. So when you come to the Mac Studio, here's the back of the Mac Studio. Notice it says here, Thunderbolt 5 ports, one, two, three, four of them there. So they've all got dedicated controllers uh, inside the silicon. Then you've got these USB-A ports that are there. And then there's some ports on the front. Now, here's the important thing to note. If you've got the M4 Max, then you get two USB-C ports up to... 10 gigabits per second. Now, if you've got the M3 Ultra version, you've got two Thunderbolt 5 ports on the front. That gives you a total of six Thunderbolt 5 ports, each with its own dedicated controller for that maximum bandwidth. And just a note here that these two USB 3 ports here are up to 5 gigabits a second. That means they're USB 3.0. And these two at 10 gigabits a second are USB 3.1. Uh, Gen 2. But nowadays, particularly when we're talking about USB 3, it is best just to talk about the number of gigabits, 5, 10 or 20, and then you really can get an understanding of what, uh, what you've got on each device. Now, before we close on that, it's also worth noting that you can connect up to eight displays, I think it was from memory, to the Mac Studio uh, using Thunderbolt and uh, HDMI. And you can do that because you can use a dock or daisy chain some of the monitors. So you, even though you've got six ports, you can get eight monitors uh, and it's got the bandwidth to cope with that, which is absolutely amazing. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>